Hello everyone, I'm Chan from Talon Battle. Welcome to our new video. In this video, we are going to check the previous year TCS Ninja Foundation reasoning ability questions. As you know, TCS is planning to hire 2023 batch students for both Ninja and digital roles. This video will help you to prepare for it. Also, we have started our live training for TCS integrated test pattern, which is also known as ITP, in which we will cover previous year questions of foundation section of numerical, verbal, and reasoning ability, and also the advanced section, which contains quantitative reasoning ability and the coding part. Also, join our social media handles like Telegram group, Instagram page, and WhatsApp group. We constantly update placement preparation updates and off campus updates on our pages. Links to all these handles are given in the description below. So before we do start, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon for instant notifications about our videos. Join TCS Masterclass for structured preparation. Coupon code and link are in the description section. So before I do start, just try to solve the question when I displayed it and then resume the video and you can check with the answer so that you can just check whether you are able to answer on your own or not. So without much further ado, let's get started with the very first question. Okay, if you observe the question, it's from a coding and decoding topic. Right? So let's first of all read the question. Find the wrong term in the letter cluster series given below. And we do have a four letter clusters. So cluster is a group of uh, alphabets, we can say that. So where we have to find the odd one out basically, correct. So but where many of the students go with a very wrong solution called finding the number of alphabets in between D and R, R and T, and T and O, and so on. But this will definitely take some time. So thereby, we need a very easy solution to do it. And what is the easiest solution? To just go with the numbers. Look, coding and decoding can be easily answered with numbers rather than alphabets. Because getting the difference of the numbers is very easy than counting how many alphabets are there in between for each and every pair. So this is the best process. Now I'll deal with that. So what are these place values? I'll talk about the place values, right? So basically, how many alphabets are there in English? Exactly 26. What are they? A to Z. So totally 26 alphabets. So how you are saying 26 alphabets? Because you do count. So that says A's place value is one since A is the very first alphabet. Similarly, Z's place value is 26 because Z is at the 26th place. Similarly, in between, there are so many alphabets. So those also have will have place values. If I ask you, what is the place value of C? What is it? C is in the third place. So place value of C is three, but it's not very difficult to remember the place values of A to Z as you are thinking. I'll tell you some tricks to remember at least for given words or given alphabets. All right. So that I, you'll make sure you're learning this and you're remembering this. All right. So let's start with the very first word D R T O. So what is D? Everybody knows that A, B, C, D, D's place value as four. Now, what about R? R, you can remember it as a right to vote. Now, basically, when you'll get your right to vote at the age of 18 years, so R's place value is 18. I hope you all understood the logic, my dears. Right? Now, the next alphabet is T. How to remember T? Now, very simple. You all know one famous format, T20 cricket. And that says T is 20. So T20 cricket, so T is 20. Now, whereas O, Oh, we have a different logic. What is that? I'll tell you a name. You're going to remember it. Now, do not worry about the spelling. It is just a name. So take it as it is. E Jyoti. You remember it as one of your friends, E Jyoti. So where E Jyoti are the multiples of five, E is the first place. So first multiple of five is nothing but five. Now, J is at the second place. So two fives are 10. Similarly, three fives are 15. Four fives are 20. Five fives are 25. Whereas T20 already we know, but still. You can remember as a name, E Jyoti, O is at the third place. So third multiple of five is nothing but 15. So O is 15 days. I hope you all thoroughly enjoyed these uh, shortcuts from our phone. Now, similarly, let us learn from the next. J, X, Z, U. Now, J, already you know, E Jyoti, J is at the second place. So second multiple of five is 10. Now, whereas X, X, Y, Z, the last three alphabets. All right. So X is nothing but 24. Because YZ are 25, 26. Now Z, everybody knows that it is a 26. Now, whereas you, you can remember it in this way. For example, now I'm going to write something. You tell me what it is looking like. 
of everybody i hope you have got it so this alphabet is also looking like a number what is it exactly what your thing is correct it's like 20 and then one but it is also at the same time it's like small u right so it's like 21 so that says u is nothing but 21 my dears so this is how you can just remember the alphabets now whereas the next m a o x now m how to remember m all right i'll, I'll be writing over here now m is nothing but the middle number m for middle so what is the half of the numbers we have in 26 exactly that is 13 all right so you can remember in this way m for middle middle number or half the number is nothing but 13 all right now next a a everybody knows that is the very first alphabet oh already we have seen e jyoti third multiple of 5 is 15 x is the 24th number right and then z u w r g how to remember g it's very easy you have seven inside g right a seven so that says very clearly g is nothing but seven now whereas you already we have learned the strategy that is 21 w w x y z so the 23rd alphabet right everybody i hope you are getting the points dear right and whereas w also looks like three three in the last is 13 dear 23 i'm sorry right whereas m three it also looks like 3, but 3 in the middle is nothing but 13. Whereas W also looks like 3. 3 at the last is 23. No, we have only 26. So that says 3 in the last will be only 23. Now R, right to vote. Now everybody, I hope you have at least learned some 10 alphabets over here. So there are some other strategies for some other for our remaining alphabets. Where, if possible, we learn in the other. Right? I hope you have thoroughly enjoyed all these shortcuts. So try to remember these logics and try to remember the place values very easily. Now let us find the logic. Look, rather than counting how many alphabets like E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q. Look, this is a very hectic task if I'm not wrong. We have tried for every alphabets. Right? So this is what I'm not going to do. So now if you observe, the difference between 4 and 18 is plus 14. Right from four, I have to add plus 14 to get 18. Similarly, from 18 to 20, how can I reach plus two exactly? Whereas from 20 to 15, it is very simple minus five. Now look how simply we have been rather than counting all the alphabets. And we have to do for the same for R and T, the same for T and O. So that will be very difficult, but numbers is very, 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 very simple. Right now, so the same logic should be followed in the others or else maybe this might be wrong and others might have common. So let us check 10 to 24 again, plus 14, 24 to 26 again, plus two and 26 to 21. It's minus five. So my above logic is the correct logic. So what should be the logic? The logic should be plus 14 plus two and minus five. Right. So if any of the cluster is not following this logic, that would be my now let us go with this 13 foot uh, like to one if i'm not wrong it's uh no this is not following the logic if i'm not wrong right everybody m a o x no it's not following because 13 plus 14 would give me 27 okay got it everybody i hope you do understand it look if you think that is not following you are wrong 13 plus 14 is how much 27 what will be the 27th alphabet for example a b c and so on up to z if A is 1, Z is 26, the next alphabet will be 27, right? Similarly, B will be 28 also, right? So just subtract minus 26, you'll get the same one. I hope you all understood the logic, my dears, over here. So it's a very good number, if I'm not wrong. 13 plus 14 is 27, where 27 can be A again, right? I hope you understood the logic. So that says this is following the logic. Now, we're asked uh, 1 to 15. Right? But is it following the logic? No, it is not following the logic. So here it says it is not following. So plus two it should be, but it's not following. Even though if I take 27, 27 plus two, 29. 29 means 29 minus 26. That gives me three. Three means C it should be, but it is O. So definitely this is not following the logic. So I'll just round it up. Now, whereas let me just check the last one also. Seven to 21, it's plus 14. 21 to 23 it's plus 2 and 23 to 18 it's minus 5 so yes it is falling second one is falling first one is falling whereas the third one uh the th that is m a o x is not falling that says option c is my answer is that clear everybody i hope this is a very good explanation that made sure you are getting even the logics to remember and also how to identify such ordinal terms that everybody now let's move on to the next one Okay, here, if I'm not wrong, this is 
question from data sufficiency topic right whereas we need to find just the whether the given data is sufficient to answer or not i hope you'd have been through this process if not i'll explain now let us look at the question given below is a question followed by two statements one and two each containing some information decide which of the statement is or are to sufficient the answer all right now the given question is the ratio of fees of two different schools is 2 is to 2.5 all right what would be the fee of the schools okay both the schools if discount of 25 percent is and 35 percent is are given on both the schools respectively all right now i have some information let me write that first of all because the question information is very very much important so from, from that we don't miss anything right so given that school 1 is to school 2 the fee is in the ratio of 2 is to 2.5 now we all know that whenever they are given ratios what is the value of fee of school one everybody i already told you multiple times in the previous videos also if i'm not wrong so that would be 2x always write in a common multiple both right so this would be the value or this is the fee now similarly the fee of school 2 will be how much my dears then exactly it would be 2.5x so i got to know so in order to say what is the fees of the schools i need x value if i'm not wrong so if i get the x value Right, I can find what is the school of fee one and school of fee two. Sorry, fee of I can get the fee of school one and the fee of school two. All right, so let me just check with the next data given. Now, given that one more point that is discount of school one, discount on school one is nothing but twenty five percent is right, whereas discount on school fees of school two is thirty five percent is. So using the information in the question and also using the information from the statements, I have to check whether I can answer or not, right? So that I can pick up any one of these options. Let me go with the statement one alone. Now do not start with together, always start with alone because we have some options, correct? Statement alone one is sufficient, statement two alone is sufficient. Now when you are using statement one alone, never ever use any piece of information from statement two, but we can use from the question use data from question right so this is the question part but not from the statement two right now given what is the you uh, data in the statement one alone discount on the second school fees is 8750 now we all know that from the given data discount on school two is 35 percent is so 35 percent is of the discount but discount will be given on what discount will be given on fee of school two only right and the value is 8750 and that says 35 percent is of fee of school 2 is 2.5x is equals to 8750 now everybody the best advantage here is we no need to find the x value actually why look we have to just say whether it is sufficient to answer or not sufficient or not that says we have got the x value from this will definitely right we will be getting right we have only one variable and one equation that says x value can be get once we get the x value now i can give you the what is the fee of school one school one fee will be 2x and fees of school two will be 2.5x so both can be found out so that says statement one alone is sufficient statement one alone is sufficient now let us check with statement two alone all right statement two alone again same use the data from the question also not only from the statement two difference between discount on two schools phase is 3750 okay first of all i know what is that discount percentage on school one fee difference of discount percentage on school two fee is given as 3750 and you all know that discount percentage on school one is uh 25 percentage of 2x difference not minus difference it means modulus so i can get a positive value from this right so that says difference discount percentage on school 2 is 35 percentage of 2.5x is equals to 3750 again one equation one variable i can find out x value from that where i can give you what is 2x value and what is 2.5x value that says statement 2 alone also is giving me the answer so when statement one alone and two alone is providing you the answer or is or are sufficient to answer so what is option you are picking exactly that says either of the statements is sufficient to answer right so either one or two you can use and answer the question i hope you thoroughly understood or uh, like uh are clear with this question guys 
right everybody so this is how we basically answer the data sufficiency so never ever forget about the data from the question part this is very important and we are using alone do not use the other statement but use from the questions all right now let's move on to the next one this is a something new you are observing if i'm not wrong so these are again nothing but we also term it as venn diagram questions right venn diagram questions so where we'll have some diagrams which are included intersected or uh, union etc etc and we have to find uh, the answer for the question according to the data given right let us check that in the following figure triangle represents junior assistant circle represents technical assistant semicircle represents admin executive and uh, rectangle represents stenographer and square represents sales executive which number represents only junior assistant stenographer and technical assistant now do not worry about the such kind of questions these are actually simple but as it's very new kind to most of you we have taken this question so that everybody would have get or can get an idea of what such questions can be answered right everybody so let's see that so first of all never ever care about the given data totally just bother about the question so what is the question i need only junior assistant stenographer and the technical assistant all right so let me just go with the symbols now now junior assistant is actually represent with a symbol called triangle stenographer is actually represent with a rectangle and then technical assistant is represent with a circle all right now so where i may have a combination of all these three right and i want that part where only junior assistant stenographer and technical assistant will be taken now everybody from this which you will pick up exactly wherever you have all these three common intersections you can take that for example i have some values like uh, let us say an example okay an example let us say this is uh, like uh, x y z and r so everybody from this what exactly could be a combination of all three now i need end all these three people definitely now can i take this part why no because a rectangle and a square or oh, sorry triangle are not involved now can i take z no a rectangle is not involved now can i take r no uh, uh sorry here z triangle is not involved here r rectangle is not involved so all the three parts are involved with x so that says all these three are in the x number similarly with this question here i need a combination of all these three now you tell me can i go with the option called a 22 how come 22 if i'm not wrong 5 plus 7 12 12 plus 10 22 but can i take 5 7 and 10 first of all look 5 is in the rectangle in the triangle and in the circle definitely 5 can be considered now you consider 7 everybody 7 can i consider now 7 is there in the rectangle in the triangle and also circle so if you say 7 can also be considered i'm sorry you're wrong why everybody 7 is there inside a square i need only these three shapes to be included whereas 7 is along with the sales representative so those 7 are also from sales representative so i cannot select that similarly 10 10 is also included in the square so i cannot take it so what is the only answer that is possible that says only 5 is the number of technical only tech te only junior assistant stenographer and the technical assistant are all everybody i hope you all understood the point if you think 5 plus 7 12 again you are wrong because 7 involves sales representative similarly 10 10 represents also sales representative even though they are included with a rectangle a triangle and a circle okay let us look at this question from the given options which answer figure cannot be made based on the unfolded cube in the question figure and this concept uh, is a unfolded to folded cubes where we'll have an unfolded cube which when folded looks exactly like what and one of these doesn't follow the folded cube so to answer such questions you need to know the initial concept of opposite faces so what is this opposite face on cube i'll just let you know let me take the figure that is given all right so p percentage right angle triangle and then on top of it eight a star form figure and then a figure of this shape so these are the six faces that are there on a cube and six symbols that can be represented on a cube now what is this opposite face i'll tell you 
So opposite faces means, for example, let me take a cube, a folded one. So which when this one is folded into this, we'll get the symbols on top of this uh, face and all. So the first one is opposite, let us say this is the sixth one. The second one is opposite, let us say the fourth one. And the fifth and third are opposite each other, let us say this. All right. So using that, let me just represent the symbols over here in this cube. Now, first of all, acid opposite phases. So how can we fix the opposite phases through the concept of alternate symbols? Opposite phases are always the alternate symbols. So what is this alternate symbol? For example, what is the alternate symbol for P? The alternate symbol for P is the right angle triangle. Similarly, what is the alternate symbol for eight? The alternate symbol for eight is this symbol, whereas the alternate symbol for percentage is nothing but the star symbol. So that says everybody. So we have got two opposite faces such of three pairs. Right. So let me start with one. For example, let us take one thing. So let me take eight as a topmost face. Right. If I take eight as a topmost face, if I'm not wrong, so what would be the opposite to it? If I'm not wrong, the opposite to it should be this one figure. So that says the bottom figure would be looking like in this way. Right. So that is done. Now, everybody, if this is the top. The front adjacent is nothing but the right angle triangle. So the very front adjacent is right angle triangle. So to the front adjacent right angle triangle, what is the opposite figure? So opposite to this must be P. So the back side must be P. Right. So therefore, the next adjacent we know. But then what comes to the left of 8 and what comes to the right of 8 is what the point. Now, if you observe, this will be folded when back side. Right. So the star will be folded on the on the right side of eight. Right. Similarly, the percentage would be folded on this way. So that says percentage will be over here. And then the star like symbol will be over here. That everybody now. So as we got to know, this is the perfect cube with the symbols and the representations. But the point is here we need some unknown faces to be identified. So there are three unknown faces. So how to overcome? I'll tell you. Now, let us look at the corner ones. Now, P star message symbol. Let us say this has message symbol is possible or not. P star and then message. Yes, it is possible. Right. So let us say P is here. Star is here and message is over here at the bottom. So that says definitely this corner can be option one. Right, everybody. So option one is possible. Similarly, P star eight. Now, if you do observe percent is over here. So star, right? Yeah, so P star 8 is on what corner everybody is on the top corner. I can say that. So this is option 2 if I'm not wrong. Right, everybody? People have you all got it? So option 2 is also possible. Now let us go with option 3. Message, percentage and star. Message, percentage is fine. But what about the star? Star is somewhere opposite to the faces now. So either star or message can be there or percentage message can be there. But this is never possible. Because these three are not adjacent faces to each other. All right. So now everybody. So that should be my answer, which cannot be based. Right. Which cannot be made. Now going at the option four, let us confirm. Right angle, message and percentage. Right angle, message and percentage. So this is nothing but my option four. So that says this is also possible. So only C cannot be based based on the above given unfolded cube. Right, everybody. So that should be my admin out. And that's where it says C must be the correct option. Everybody. Let's move on to the next question. Okay, so this is a coded blood relation question. Now, where if you observe it very properly, the first one is second one's dash. But if you observe the third statement, the second one is first one's dash. So wherever such statements are there, the reverse ones, these are to be very careful statements. So whenever such questions are asked, so how to answer the questions is what we are going to explain. Now, if you observe very clearly, I need what is F at the rate of R percentage I slash e percentage m and as said the reverse statements might be problematic at times so you need to be very careful you can go through step by step all right r percentage i i slash e and e percentage m so you can represent one by one and then you can just go through the blood relations and all now so please remember male will always be present with a box female will always be represented with a circle Couple will always be with the double headed arrow, and uh, siblings will always be presented with the equals to siblings means brothers or sisters. 
brother or sisters now and then the next generation will be represented with a downward arrow all right now if we observe f at the rate r at the rate means straight only like first person is so f is r's daughter so when f is r's daughter if i'm not wrong f should be the daughter of r all right now do you know any information as of r now no so r gender is unknown as of now so just kept like that r percentage i percentage is at the second so second means also the same is just right one first person is second person so r is wife of k so when r is the wife she should be female so when r is the wife of k k must be what everybody k must definitely be a male right so that is directly said right because if r is wife k must be definitely be a husband all right now moving on to the next one i sorry here it is i right okay so it should not be k actually it should be i just a small mistake neglect that so here r percentage i so r is wife of i so i must be the male now when that says i slash e slash talks about the second person is first persons so e is i's mother it should be e is i's mother so when e is i's mother now given e percentage n percentage means wife so e is wife of n but everybody that says e must be the wife of n and n must be a male i hope you all understood the points my dear so this is the family tree that we can draw all right so just giving you a final information one last time f is the daughter of r r is the wife of i and i is a male as since r is a female that says i's mother is e and e's husband is n right so this is what the family tree now the question is how r is related to n now this is one such typical question again you might give r relation and also n relation as in sometimes some people will answer according to r some people will answer according to n so if you observe the question the question is r how is r related to n so you have to answer as in r is n's r is n's son's mm -hmm. wife so son's wife means what is the only possibility that is nothing but the daughter in law for everybody daughter in law so sometimes you might you might answer father in law because n is the father in law of r but the question is not with respect to n the question is with respect to r so r is n's son's wife or son's wife so that says answer must be daughter in law my dear i hope you clearly got it and be very careful when there are reverse statements so always follow the strategy write each and everything and go step by step so if there are straight forward right you can go directly with that but whenever there are reverse kindly do it in this way all right everybody so this question is basically from a paper folded and cuts right so here we have a paper which is in the form of a square then fold it 1 2 3 4 times and then punch the holes so when unfolded how does it looks like so how to answer such questions we'll go basically in a reverse strategy what is that now if you observe very properly there is a a diamond symbol or rhombus symbol and on top and on bottom we have a punch we have a holes now what should be there it should be opened right it should be open on both ends now when it open on both ends if i'm not wrong it looks exactly like this way if i'm not wrong right this one to the reverse one right and now when when a hole is made from here we will get a hole on to the top of it because it is unfolded so since it's a fold it should be unfolded and will have on top also one punch right the reflection punch we can say that similarly to this we'll have a punch over here right everybody now so from this we have to unfold again in this manner all right in this manner so that says everybody i should get a kind of this figure from now when got everybody actually i need to have two over here and two over here now when unfolded if i'm not wrong first of all i'll be getting somewhere over here two more symbols like this at this point and this at this point all right because these are again the kind of reflection punches we can get it. and then when this is completely unfolded everybody and uh, yeah we forgot one more point when this is unfolded right in this manner we will get in punches over here also so that says these are the two holes we have right and then when totally unfolded my dears if i'm not wrong we would be getting a such a image of 
right? So these two and these two are the opposite when unfolded. And this reflection will be happening at this point. So that says we will get an image of such and such option is option A from our top. Right, everybody? So these are uh, uh, visual reasoning questions. So you need to be very careful when answering such questions, my dears. Right? So that says option A is the only possibility for this question. All right, everybody? So that's all for this video. Thank you for watching this video till the end. If you have liked the video, don't forget to press the like button. Also, join our social media handles like Telegram group, Instagram page, and WhatsApp groups. Links to all these handles are given in the description below.